Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. There is an uncomfortable truth lurking in today's gospel, and it is this, that miracles are wasted on most people. And you see in the gospel today, nine out of ten people there where Jesus is passing between Galilee and Samaria do not understand the significance of what Jesus is up to. I always think it's so funny. Nine out of ten doctors recommend Colgate toothpaste. You know why that is? In my opinion, it's not a very Christian thing to say, but I think it's because the other one couldn't be bought. So when you hear about, you know, nine out of ten dentists say this, or perhaps nine out of ten doctors, well, I'm not going to go any further, but uh, nine out of ten really usually don't know what they're talking about. And it is certainly the case with the lepers today. Now, Jesus is always, he, he's able to draw the crowd, but his retention rate is never 100%. There are 10 out of 10 lepers cleansed. That's pretty good. But as we said, there's only one that returns to give thanks at the feet of Jesus. This is not really a lesson in gratitude, because if that were the case, Jesus is not the best model of gratitude, uh, because Jesus is frankly disappointed. He is surprised. He says, were not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? Was no one found to return and give thanks to God except this foreigner? Not you too, Jesus. But Jesus is surprised because the ex-leper that comes to him is a Samaritan. And the Samaritans of all people were at the greatest disadvantage for understanding the significance of what it is that Jesus had come to do. Because you see, Samaritans do not worship God according to the liturgy and the rubric that he gave them. I've heard it said, everybody, you know, worships God in his own way. You worship God in your own way, and I worship God in his. And that is exactly the relationship between the Jews and the Samaritans. They did not obey God in terms of worship practice. They had even doctored the Pentateuch. They had changed the scriptures, and they refused to worship God on the Temple Mount, Mount Zion. So you would think that somebody like that would not understand the point of Jesus coming. It's the Samaritan, though, even though he has all of these odds against him, he's the one who realizes something about Jesus that evades the other nine Jewish lepers. And part of it, a big part of it, is the Samaritan understands that Jesus is not a miracle dispenser. This is how the other lepers treat Jesus that uh, Jesus is kind of a divine vending machine, that they pick up their cure from Jesus as simple as you put in the coin, you get your bag of chips, and then you go on, you know, life the way that it was before. You see, for the other nine, Jesus has served his purpose, and now he is retired to the back of their minds until they need him again. Now, it would have been amazing, you know, the Jesus comes in and the lepers are there on the edge of town and he heals them and they realize that they've been healed. And then they go and they do the natural thing. I mean, they go and they do exactly what Jesus told them to do. Jesus said, go and show yourselves to the priests. Now, in those days, if you had the good fortune of getting over leprosy, what you would do is you would go to your priest the priest would examine you, make sure that you were well. He'd offer the sacrifice on your behalf, and then he would pronounce you officially clean. This is what the book of Leviticus tells us. So they go and they do the natural thing. Jesus said, go show yourself to the priest. And so they hop to it and they leave Jesus behind in the dust. The natural thing is exactly what you should not do. Because it is the natural man does not have the Holy Spirit dwelling within him. He does not understand the things of God. Instead, what happens to you and me, because we are by nature sinful and unclean, is that we are turned in on ourselves. 
We want what we want. We want our desires and our needs to be met and to be gratified. We fall victim to these sorts of natural inclinations all the time. We do live sometimes like God exists to answer my prayers. Now, that's a very different thing than saying God does exist and God does answer my prayers, but it's a different thing to say he exists in order to answer my prayers. That God exists, independent of you and me, just so he can wait on me. Sometimes we treat God like a therapist. And there's nothing wrong, it's 2022, okay? There's nothing wrong with going to therapy. But the thing about a therapist is you go to the therapist when you feel bad, therapist makes you feel better so you can move on with life the way that you want it to go. We talked about this at some length in our study on prayer and devotional life. This is why so many people don't have the discipline of praying every day. Because they think that God is a psychiatrist. You go, when you have the problem, talk to God, problem's over. I don't talk to you anymore because I don't want to see you anymore. This is how we treat God. This is the natural thing. Because we miss many times that our lives are not about us. Your life is not about you. It involves you. It involves mostly how you screwed it up, really. Uh, but our lives are not about us. And so the other lepers, of course, they don't understand this. Uh, the attitude of the nine lepers is, well, I had my hour and a half of religious activity. I had my time with Jesus. I was good. I don't need to stop and thank him anymore. For the Samaritan, it's different. Because the Samaritan is the one who comes back to Jesus. And the Samaritan understands that Jesus does not simply dispense miracles. That Jesus is the miracle. He's not going to go waste his time and see a priest because Jesus is the priest. Jesus is the priest who not only pronounces him clean and whole, not only from his leprosy, but from the leprosy of sin. But Jesus is also the God who heals him. Samaritan has no business in the temple. And he's not going to go to the temple when he can fall down at the feet of Jesus and be in the presence of God. So 10 out of 10 lepers are cleansed. But the Samaritan shows us that things are better. They're so much better when you see Jesus for who he really is. The scripture says that God is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think. Abundantly more. And the Samaritan gets more than he bargained for. What he wanted was he wanted to be healed of this terrible skin disease. And little did he know that calling out to Jesus for mercy would be answered by the one who is the Son of God, who is the Savior of both Jew and Samaritan, who is bringing even more than bodily healing to all the leprous children of Adam. And Jesus gives him more than a placebo or a band-aid, even though that is mostly what you and I settle for most of the time. He gives him so much more than that. You see, Jesus, as a physician, he does more than simply put band-aids on things. Jesus likes to do transplants. He likes to give you eyes to see him. He likes to give you a new heart to trust in him. And the cure that Jesus gives to us is not so much to patch up. Instead, it's to kill the rot within us and then to raise the dead. Jesus always gives us abundantly more. And Jesus tells us that. But he says to the Samaritan, he says, rise and go your way, your faith has saved you. And that is why the Samaritan is on a different track. It's not the way that it was before. It's not, well, now that I'm healed, it's now back to life as usual, it's business as usual. But now he's on a completely different way. He is on the way to salvation. And now his entire life is a journey back to that kingdom where divine healing rules over all. It's a dark 
and dangerous journey. And it's one that nine out of 10 people will not bother with. They do not see the point of enduring cross and death and castigation. But the Samaritan knows that the odds are in his favor. A piddly little skin disease is nothing compared to sin and devil and death, which will all cower at the feet of Jesus. And so he does what Jesus says, rise and go your way. The Samaritan is able to do that by grace, because just like us, he knows the end of the story. And we rise and go our way because our faith has saved us. For Jesus' sake. Amen.